Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about the Muppets and Disney Plus and Disney Plus canceling shows before they've even filmed them already. They're canceling stuff already. It seems like they're scrambling behind the scenes. We're going to talk about how Disney doesn't know what the hell to do with the Muppets. Yeah, this they is, don't. This has been a problem ever since they bought the Muppets. It's one of those things where I actually wish the Muppets would have gone or stayed with the Henson Company. I, I do too. I think they would have done a better job with them. Um, and we're going to talk about all of that. Frank Oz and his thoughts on on where the Muppets are at with Disney. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go there. Um, so please subscribe if you have not subscribed already. We hit uh, 58,000 subs this week. We're almost at 59. Almost at 59. So uh, thank you so much for that. Again, subbing helps us tremendously in the YouTube algorithm. So please uh, sub if you want us to continue to make content. We got to get found uh, to make content. That's right. Because, you know, if nobody's watching our videos. Why are we making them? That's right. You know, so, all right. Disney Plus has already canceled the Muppets reboot. This actually surprises me. Yeah, they made a big deal about them doing it. Huge deal about it. And they were reportedly going to do a course correction on the Muppets uh, primetime show, which right. did not did, sit well with a lot yeah. of people. Um, I think it was kind of funny for what it was, but it was also very mean spirited. I think the Muppets mm -hmm. have always been a little edgy, but not that edgy. And nobody wants to know about the, Muppets, the Muppets not sex CW. lives, you know? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so it was like more like Avenue Q or something than it was the Muppets. Um, but Disney doesn't know what to do with the Muppets. And I think they probably maybe got a couple of scripts out or they looked at it and they're like, this isn't going to do the Muppets right now. Let's see what happened here. And then we'll talk about some other shows they canceled. And we'll talk about Frank Oz and what he thinks. Uh, Muppets Live Another Day. Disney Plus's previously announced Muppets reboot series will reportedly not be moving forward. And I actually was looking forward to this one. According to Deadline, Muppets Live Another Day, which previously received a pilot order, has now been axed as a result of creative differences between the show's writing team and the higher-ups at the Disney-owned Muppet Studio. Why well, don't just get a different writing team? That's a good question. Because you know why? Oh, Galaxy's Edge didn't do as well as we thought it would. We're not, our, our, our traffic's down, you know, we're not getting as many visitors, not making as much money. We got to start cutting some stuff. I think that's exactly what's going on. So they put everything into Disney Plus and the numbers are kind of dropping on Disney stuff. They're starting to cut back on things that they don't think are going to be slam dunks. They're not going to generate any meaningful revenue. And the Muppets, you know, they don't know what to do with them. So this is why I was excited about it, though, because they said Muppets Live Another Day would have picked up where the 84 film The Muppets Take Manhattan left off with Kermit the Frog attempting to reunite the Muppets in an attempt to locate Rolf. There's the a lot of attempts there. A lot of attempts there. A lot of attempts to get this thing off the ground. It didn't happen. The scripted comedy series was in development for Disney Plus for some time and was to be written by uh, producers including Josh Gad. So Muppets Now, an unscripted short-form variety show featuring celebrity guests in the vein of The Muppet Show is currently slated to debut next year. Muppets Live Another Day, on the other hand, has now become the second of two comedy series to be scrapped by the streaming service ahead of its launch this fall, the other being Ford Ads. Yeah, you're talking about that. But they're still doing the Muppet Show, Muppets Now. A Muppet Show-esque type thing. Yeah, I, oh God. So this is, okay, so let's, before we talk about the Muppets, let's just talk about the Ford Ads thing. And it is exactly- I haven't heard of this. Yeah, they buried it. Uh, I didn't even, so apparently it's uh, about Ford Ads. So they reported they're working on a new comedy called Four Dads in an article by Deadline, which is probably why you didn't hear about it, because there would be backlash. Because here we go. Uh, about the cancellation of the new Muppet series Live Another Day, they also confirmed Four Dads did not go forward. Never heard of this. Four Dads was set to follow Ethan and Sebastian, who divorce each other and then separately remarry other partners. They must learn to parent their budding teenage daughters while avoiding the pitfalls of their two very different families. So it's my two dads doubled. Parenting. I don't know. I'm confused. I'm confused. While the series was never confirmed by Disney and would have been a big step forward for Disney Plus to feature a comedy series with LGBTQ parents. I know. It's LGBLT. Basically, it's my two dads with, with two sets of gay dads. That's what it was. But they canceled it. So they canceled the Muppets. Um, and they canceled, well, let's see. They canceled Book of Enchantment because it was too dark. I think Book of Enchantment. Those are based on the books, right. Was too expensive. Yeah, I'm thinking it tries. Because I, I think these Star Wars and Marvel shows, and remember, guys, they're talking about all these great Marvel shows that are coming, all these really expensive Marvel shows, like most of them aren't even being filmed yet. 
they're going to be crazy expensive. They're already talking about bringing the the Transformers girl in for Hawkeye, but it's not going to be on on Disney Plus for like two years. Yeah. So they're starting to cut corners already. Oh yeah, one of the articles, of course, written by a woman was like. Oh, and you're out there thinking, wait, Hawkeye's a woman? And I'm like, oh my God. So they're already getting digs in because you know, it's, you always think it's just Jeremy Renner. Well, you're wrong. And I'm like, oh my God, here we go. If you didn't know you're a misogynist, it's like, because whatever. Go ahead. And I actually liked, I mean, she's going to be Kate Bishop, who was introduced fairly recently, about 10, 12 years ago. I actually do like the actress. She was in Transformers. She was in Bumblebee. And I think Bumblebee was uh, a damn fine Transformers movie and the one we should have gotten the first time around. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know how she's going to be in Hawkeye. And it's it's years away. All this stuff is years away. I can see her doing it. I, I can, can see her I doing think it. I can see her. I really can see her doing it. Yeah. So, uh, Muppets, though. This is, so let's talk about the Muppets. Because, look, Disney, Disney doesn't know what the hell to do with the Muppets. They mm -hmm. never have. It's one of those things where, and I think we're going to see this more and more, and we're seeing it with Star Wars. Disney buys IP but they don't know what to do with the IP that they bought unless they keep the original people intact. Well, that's what they're saying what's going on with a lot of these streaming services, Netflix, Hulu, Disney. They're just buying up, like, what's going to be the biggest things? And they're all just grabbing and grabbing and grabbing at anything to try to buy it up. And it's like, but that doesn't mean it's going to be good. Right. You know, they're well, trying to beat each other to the punch, but it's not necessarily mean to make it good. It's like buying a restaurant, uh, you know, a, a four-star restaurant. And the chef gets rave reviews. Everybody loves this restaurant. You're going to buy it. Be like, yeah, this is money in the bank. But the chef doesn't come with the restaurant. You buy the building. You buy the recipes. Uh, some of the staff may stick around. But if you don't have that head chef, it's not going to be the same well, thing. I'm not I'm, yeah, that's true. But I'm talking about, too. It's like, okay, same using your analogy. It's like this one restaurant's known for being like the coolest restaurant around because it has some weird fusion. Like, I don't know. A uh, of like French south korean fusion or something that doesn't really seem like it would go Sounds together good. anyway and then so so the other the, the other two big restaurant places are just going around trying to buy up every restaurant that could that sounds like it could be that mm. and then they get they get a, a mixed bag of shit and great stuff because they wouldn't grab whatever they could and then when people don't like it because it's not as good or it's not as popular now it's because there's something wrong with them not because they did they made a bad choice yeah, well, that's just it. And with the Muppets, the Muppets was actually one of Disney's first like high-profile buys, mm -hmm. and they bought it, you know, not long after Jim Henson passed. The thing is, is they didn't have Jim Henson, right? Like, and and I will argue that Henson Henson is doing a better job with Henson's stuff. With we saw this with the Dark Crystal, mm -hmm. they're doing a better job with it because you know they're his kids. They grew up. They knew. Could you imagine Disney did the Dark Crystal? <laughs> Oh my God. No, I don't want to imagine. <laughs> but watching the Dark Crystal that actually had, you know, some of the original people involved in it and had the Henson kids involved in it. Now there are, there are some discussions about, you know, the Henson kids. I know there was a big uh, uh, kerfuffle. And you were going to say kerfuffle. I was like, kerfuffle, I'm to say kerfuffle. That's my word of the week. Kerfuffle over them firing uh, Steve Whitmire as, mm -hmm. as uh, Kermit and, uh, you know, all that. But that might have been a Disney thing too. Who knows? But the thing is, is that the Henson touch, the Jim Henson touch, the Muppets were so tied to like <laughs> the touch, the touch to, they were so tied to Jim this Henson is a good himself. Touch, not a bad touch. This is good touch. They were so tied to Jim Henson himself that nothing since his passing has been quite the same. They've had a few close calls, you know, they've had a few, like even the first Disney Muppets movie was a very respectful homage to uh, the classic Muppet show, but it, it, it was, wasn't it wasn't that good and then you know the, the next one i forget what the hell it was called with the fake kermit that one was garbage you know it, they just they can't do it they don't know what to do with the muppets um so here's frank oz who's who called them out before he said you know they made the muppets very mean-spirited like they don't know what to do either they're too soft or they're too mean he likes the last jedi i know right i okay, was like dude, oh well we still take, love you take frank's well he likes the last jedi because he was actually in it well, we, st we, we still like you, Frank. I mean, you're allowed to like it. You're allowed not to like it. I always say that, and I, and I stand by it. I have a lot of friends who disagree with me on things, and we're still friends. It's a miracle. Go so, ahead. Well, this is interesting, because he brings up Sesame Street, and, and I just had this conversation with Squid King the other night about Sesame Street, because we started looking at some of these really weird 70s uh, Sesame Street animated shorts, and he was like, wow, they, don't even, you know, they weren't even running those when I was a kid. And I'm like, yeah, because Sesame Street, when we grew up, was much edgier mm. and it was skewed a little bit older than it does now. Now it's kind of like Dora the Explorer. They've mm. like really toned it down, but it was actually for 
you know, grade school kids, a lot of them urban. It had an urban setting. Uh, it was edgier, and a lot of those cartoon shorts still hold up. You know, they're very, very edgy for the time. And Sesame Street lost its teeth. Unfortunately, Sesame Street is only a shadow of what it was now because they're aiming at little kids. I'm unhappy about that. Frank Oz is not happy about that. I'd like it. I'd like to be there. I'd like to go two days a year just to show everybody how it used to be. Uh, so the long-running children's program isn't the only handsome property that has slid in Oz's esteem. In addition to voicing characters of Miss Piggy, Fozzie Bear, and others, stretching back to the Muppets' early days, Oz went on to direct the Muppets' Take Manhattan, which I loved. Mm -hmm. I love yeah, Muppets I know he Manhattan. likes that one a lot. Uh, when does, and I, he also did uh, Little Shop of Horrors. You know, he, he actually is a director. He's just done a lot of things. When discussing the recent slate of Muppets films, beginning with the 2011 entry, The Muppets, Oz seemed to imply that the latest generation of films aren't as connected to their predecessors as he'd like. I thought the first one was really smarmy. These are my brothers and sisters working in the movie, and they didn't have a good time. When we did movies, we had a great time because Jim was collaborative. That's not what happened in the first movie. I thought there was a wonderful thing. There were some wonderful things in it, but in general... Uh, I start to vomit when things get over sentimental and sweet. It's all because Disney doesn't understand purity. <laughs> That's probably true. Disney doesn't get it. Um, and then they said about the Muppets. So they went the opposite. So the first one was kind of like this really gooey love letter to the Muppets TV show. You know, the Muppets show. And then they went the opposite way. And they're like, well, let's take the Muppets and throw them into a very kind of adult sitcom mm -hmm. and see how that goes. And that didn't go very well. So Disney didn't want the puppeteers on the red carpet because what they wanted all at, at the time was an opportunity as a corporation to have many people do a character, which means that they could have a Kermit on a cruise and a Kermit in a movie at the same time. They wanted to have it all so they could have several people doing that. I think eventually they realized it doesn't work that way. That's probably what happened with <laughs> Steve Whitmire. Sounds like the blogs. Yeah. The, the Disney wants you to go and get all these mom bloggers on there and people don't identify with them so they, they're going to eventually realize it doesn't work that way. Well that's the way Disney does work though because we, we joked and it's it's only half joking that they probably had a replacement for Rusty Taylor when she passed mm -hmm. as Mickey they or as Minnie Mini. they probably have two or three Minis lined up. I'm probably sure know. they do. Uh, back in 82 Oz and Henson co-directed The Dark Crystal. I didn't realize he co-directed it, a film that may not have found a wide audience at the time, but it did develop a fan base. I yeah, it was, cool. I liked him when I was a kid. So, you know, he was, uh, he turned down an opportunity to be involved in the new project. I was asked to do it. I declined. I don't think about puppets. I think about character. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be glib. I really don't think that way. I didn't have any ideas at all. Uh, that's kind of a bummer, but actually it turned out pretty good. Yeah, he liked The Last Jedi, though, so whatever. But no, this is not the first time. He, every opportunity that comes up to throw shade at Disney regarding the Muppets, he does it. And he's, yeah, he's always there. <laughs> he's always there. Frank Oz is reliably grumpy. And I think he's right, though. I think the Muppets, again, they bought the Muppets. They haven't done much with them. They have the the badly aging attraction in Hollywood Studios, which is the only Muppets anything in yeah, it is, It does need redone so bad. I'm sorry, you say it's grumpy. And all I keep thinking of is to Disney, get off my lawn! <laughs> yeah. Stop peeing in my lawn. But he's he's not wrong. And this, you know, I think they were kind of looking at this. And now here's the thing, though. I think Josh Gad might have actually kind of gotten it because he's around our age. He grew up with the Muppets. He might have actually been okay. Um, but, you know, I think this is probably comes down from on high from the Disney suits. Well, they who didn't like, like, they couldn't agree on it. So Josh Gad probably wanted to do something similar to what, what, what was more true to what it was. And they didn't want to do that. Yeah, so instead we're just getting short. So that's basically what the Muppets have been relegated to is parodies of other, like, you know, the movies even. It's like we have Muppet Treasure Island, we have Muppet Christmas Carol, uh, you know, the Muppets doing parodies on YouTube, and that's basically what they've been doing with them because they don't know what to do with them. And it's sad. I really, part of me is like, just sell the Muppets back to the Hensons and be done with it. Yeah. Just because you don't know what you're doing with them, you're not using them. And, you know, or partner up with them and bring them in to fix it. Um, yeah, and even in the theme parks, you're, you're, you've are you're shoved them in the back corner of the theme park, and there's not a lot of merchandise to support them. Um, you know, uh, well, Muppets, uh, Great Moments in History, they did. That was actually... Oh, yeah, they did that. That's they actually Magic decent. Kingdom. But, like, you know, they, they're really not doing much with them, and they can't they can't get it together. So just, you know, give, give the Muppets back to people who actually care about the Muppets. They won't. They won't. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is very, very much what Disney's doing is they're just buying stuff up and not realizing that once you buy it, you got to be able to 
please the fans or do right by we the franchise. We clearly know that Disney doesn't know how to do that. They all know how to do that. They so. keep buying up franchises they don't know how to work with. Nope. Nope. Uh, okay, so we're going to wrap this one up. Yep. Okay, so please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants here on Clownfish TV. This has been Neon and Geeky. Bye. Goodbye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.